Hi guys and girls on YouTube. In this video we're going to be taking a quick look at the Thorn 1400 chassis. Um, now this is one I use in my reception area in the shop when I'm open. Um, currently I'm closed due to the lockdown. Um, so I thought this is a good time to get it out and finish off a couple of the jobs uh, that still need a doing on it. Now I've already done quite a few jobs on it in the past and I've had it running um, when people come in so they can see it running. Um, but there's a couple more little jobs to do but before I do any work to it I'll um, I'll just give you a tour around and I'll just show it you working. So this is actually a dual standard TV 405625 um, seems to be dating from about 1967 1968 um, that's um, a view of the back um, you can see the handle on top because it's only a 17 inch um, so right let's uh, let's take the back off and I'll show you some of the parts I've already changed in it and I'll show you some of the other faults still left on it Right, so that's the view with the um, back of the TV. I'll just uh, move into the chassis and we can have a look at that. And then I'll um, I'll open it and uh, we'll have a look at the inside. I'll show you what bits I've already changed. Right, so all these are the bits that have been changed. Um, I'll run you through them. First, I've changed the electrolytics because it's had a bit of a hum bar and a bit of a hum on the sound. Um, the line output valve and the efficiency diode, I've changed them because it had a lack of width and every part I change makes it a bit better but I've still got a lack of width. Now I also found a couple of high resistors in the boost circuit, uh, the width control has gone down in value, all them parts have made it a lot better but I've still got a very slight lack of width and I actually found um, it seems to be coming from um, a voltage dependent resistor which I'm going to, it's going to take me ages to look for one. Um, I'll just come back to that in a minute. Um, now this capacitor here, I've changed that because it had intermittent fuse blowing. Um, there's two capacitors there. They actually test all right, but they've had a very hard life. And one's got a distinct bulge in it there. So even though um, it tests all right and it works fine in the set... I've actually put uh, some mullard mustards in. So, right, okay, let's move over to here. Um, that's the EHT tripler there. That's the new line output valve and efficiency diode. Um, you can see there the brand new dropper at the top. Um, there's a few. Um, that capacitor there, somebody else has obviously... I've, Somebody's done that in the past, that wasn't me. I've just changed these two here for Mullard Mustard. I've changed that one there. Um, you can see the resistors I've changed down there. I think the problem seems to be coming from this thermistor. It's the width stabilisation thermistor because if I disconnect that, the width comes out. Um, but so far, I haven't found a replacement. So I'm going to keep looking for that. Uh, at some time it appears to have had a new HT reservoir capacitor in um, and the big problem with this is um, the actual tuner um, that wants taking to bits and servicing if you watch my last video on the Thorn 8000 I'll show you how to service the tuner um, so that needs doing but um, the good news is we can actually switch this telly on and I can show it you working because um, when I'm open I have it working in the reception area so just give me a second, I'll stop the camera, uh, we'll move it to a different bench, connect the skybox up and we'll switch it on. Right, so here we are, TV's connected to a skybox. We've still got a little bit of a fault on the sound and uh, also the tuning needs a service, but it does come on. And of course that black bar across the middle is actually coming from the camera. Yeah, if, if you can hear it, the sound's very croaky, that's another little job to do. Gazing, gazing, 
Mediterranean Sea. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see, but um, there's just a very, very slight lack of width down that side, which I'm going to have to um, see if I can find one of them VDRs from somewhere. But there you go, that's the uh, working Thorn 17 inch 1400 chassis. Now also, if we take a look in the service manual, there were some actual modifications in production. Um, now one um, concerns um, the vision on sound buzz. Um, I've actually checked and somebody's already changed that resistor. Um, but I'm going to make sure that all these modifications are done as well um, to bring it up to the uh, standard of the later sets. Now also, here's another little point to note. Um, the heater chain is actually fed by a half wave rectifier. Now, should that go short circuit, the valves will be overrun because the voltage across them will uh, rise up. So, Thorn have built in a safety circuit. So, if we check the heater voltage there, and we come along here, it goes to a resistor. And that resistor actually goes to the um, grid there of the frame valve. Um, now, the idea is... If this diode shorts out, uh, we're going to feed um, pulses into the frame there, which will effectively cause a frame fault. So you'll have a visual indication on the screen that there's a problem. So if you get one of these in with a frame fault, um, always check that that diode doesn't short circuit first. But uh, you'll probably see that the valves are overrunning anyway. Right guys, so before we go, when we close the video, um, I just want to show you one more thing. Um, on this set, um, the line output valve, the efficiency diode and the tripler are actually on this side. So if you're carrying out an alignment job and you're adjusting one of the IF coils, um, you've got a screwdriver holding the chassis over. Um, this actually becomes a very dangerous chassis to work on because if we take the screwdriver away, you'll see the chassis closes inwards because of the weight um, on this side. Now, if you've got your hand in here and the chassis closes, you could touch on the line output valve and get a very nasty RF burn. Um, now, in later production, all this lot in the 1500 chassis was shifted to the other side of the TV. Um, so, although the 1400 is a very easy set to work on, um, it's also a very dangerous chassis if you um, just prop this open with something because it closes on its own so uh, there you go guys um, thanks for watching and um, subscribe to my channel for some more interesting videos okay goodbye